All right, well, welcome back. I've got, got 1,300 on my watch, so that's what, that's what we're going with. All right, so uh, th this afternoon we're going to have another breakout session, but uh, we also, as part of the Cyber Leader Conference, we've brought in some additional guest speakers. Uh, and these, these folks, the first one we're going to introduce here momentarily, are kind of going to give you a perspective on, as a team lead, as kind of the first uh, field grade officer in your chain of command, what is expected of you, what they're anticipating, and what they think you should to understand and be, be ready for on those uh, team, at that team level from, from the field grades. So the first one that we have here as a guest speaker is Major Keith Major. He's a 2008 uh, graduate from a West Point, majored in information technology while he was here, and he has a master's degree in computer science from Stanford University. Uh, he completed uh, company command in 2015 and transferred over to the cyber branch. Uh, he then taught in the EECS department, and then he is held a number of cyber jobs. He is currently the 91 CPT lead, CPT lead uh, down at Fort Gordon. And I will turn it over to Keith. Well, good afternoon, cyber leaders. There we go. Uh, so I've been given the best challenge opportunity to speak just after you had a good meal and during your normally scheduled Dean's Hour nap. So uh, thanks, Colonel Arnold, for this opportunity. So as a former 2008 cadet, as was just stated, I know that some of you are here because you want to get out of law or mill arts. I might just be projecting on those two. Um, or you're here because you want to be. Uh, as a former instructor, I know I have your attention for five minutes, or because you're here to learn, uh, you might listen to me a little longer. My talk is focused on that second group, both cases. Um, so I'll say it's a little weird to give a speech about my expectations of company grades, because uh, I normally do this in initial counseling, and that is more of a conversation. So I'll give you a little bit of my background in DCO, or Defensive Cyber Operations, so you have a background of why I expect what I do. I'll talk about my leadership philosophy as well as my leadership values. And then I'll open the door for questions so we can have that conversation. So I've had the privilege of being a team lead on two cyber protection teams, 503 CPT and currently 91 Cyber Protection Team. I've been in support of Joint Force Headquarters Cyber Navy, as well as Joint Force Headquarters Doden. Um, so I guess I don't work for the Army uh, on both of those. Um, so I've traveled a little bit with the Cyber Protection Brigade. I've gone to Korea, I've gone to Hawaii, I've gone to the Pentagon, and we've done missions as well on the defense finance um, terrain as well as transcom. So really good experiences on both of my cyber protection teams. So cyber protection teams, your job is in the Doden to discover the adversary and to protect the Doden from the adversary's attacks. General Vile told you about why that's important is to ensure that our commanders continue to make decisions at the opportune time. You're, you will be in a constant operational and training cycle, preparing for mission and executing them. You could work with, brief, and report to general officers, senior executive service civilians, joint staff officers, and numerous colonels in the Army, Air Force, Marines, and to our midshipmen Navy as well. For your operation missions to be successful, you will need to integrate and get support from cybersecurity service providers, those network local defenders and network technicians. Not developing buy-in from each party will impact your analyst's ability to do their job. You will take operations orders from myself and people like me and develop clear task and purpose for your subordinates and report daily to a joint staff potentially while on mission. And when your mission is over, you will write an operational report for what you discovered that can be consumed and read at the Joint Force Headquarters level, uh, as well as um, the combatant command level. Now, these are large tasks to ask any new company grade officer. But cyber is a team sport. And you will not be alone, and I will prepare you to execute your assigned duties. So let me give you my definition of leadership as part of our initial counseling. Enable the success 
of others. Enable the success of others. My job is to enable your success by giving you feedback, opportunities to learn, to challenge you, and to coach you. Your role is to be coachable. I don't prefer hotheads on my team. They're usually out for themselves and don't care about enabling the success of their subordinates. I expect you as leaders to enable the success of your NCOs, your warrants, your Department of Army civilians, and your soldiers under your care. I expect my leaders to give me input into my operational plans, to ask for clarity, and to be honest in after-action reviews so we can all improve together. As I said, cyber is a team sport. We need to ensure everyone feels part of our team and then can positively contribute to our mission. I'm gonna challenge you to lead with focus on four leadership values that I personally believe are great, are critical in creating great teams. Those leadership values are character, care, competence, and team learning. Now let me talk about each in detail for a moment. Your character is foundational for your Army career as an officer. Now there are different definitions of that out there and I utilize the Army values because it's common foundation to everyone in the Army. So let me discuss two of those, integrity and personal courage. Integrity, I trust everyone when I start a new assignment and I encourage you to do the same. That trust is only broken based off of issues with integrity. This trust is not broken when we plan on getting something done and don't, plans change. It's when we report on something and will willingly deceive. Do not give away your integrity. This branch is small. Your reputation will go a long way and will precede you in your future jobs. The second character trait is personal courage. Now as a 17 alpha, it is very rarely are you gonna be putting your life in danger. You are more likely to see, as we do, in every branch in this service, times when someone is not doing the right thing and people ignore it and thus encourage it by not saying something. What will you do if you hear a joke about someone's sex, culture, race, or religion? Will you approach them and say, hey, we don't do that here? Or will you ignore it and allow members of your team to feel less than and ostracized? I expect my leaders to have the personal courage to not walk past an infraction, as silly as laces sticking out of someone's boots, to a security infraction. Not every report you give will be positive and reflect positively on you, but you need the personal courage to still do the right thing. As I've said multiple times, and I will continue to say, cyber is a team sport. It requires cohesive teams where everyone feels valued and everyone is accountable. Ensure your people feel valued. And that brings me to the second leadership value that I expect you to have, and that's care. You need to treat everyone with dignity and respect, period. People will not be successful if they don't feel like they are part of our team. Everyone brings value to our team. You must learn your people as individuals. What's their goals, their weaknesses, what's important to them. Get to know them, help them reach their goals, and be their best advocate. To demonstrate care for your people, you will need to train them to do anything you ask of them. A briefing, an ACFT, and yes, we still do that. A mission on a new type of terrain that you've never been on before, a promotion board. You need to spend the time to care for your people by preparing them to do the missions you ask of them. And then you need to ensure you give them feedback on their performance, so they have every opportunity to improve and to grow. And then you will ensure timely and accurate evaluations and awards to care for their careers. The final part of care is care for self. You need to find ways to balance your life and your work, to relax and do what is important to you. Just like you should care about your soldiers and civilians taking care of themselves, you need to be deliberate in how you do this for you. You cannot care for others if you don't care for yourself. 
So I've talked about leadership. It's about enabling the success of others. And we talked through two of my four leadership values, which is character and care. So at this halfway point, I know what you're all thinking. I wonder if Major Major has read Catch-22. Do you think he'll change his name if he gets promoted? Well, to alleviate all of your burning concerns you may have about me, the answer to both is no. Well, I guess I'll keep my day job. Um, all right, let's talk about competence. What I mean by competence is you should strive for excellence in being an Army leader. Some of that, some of you may think that that is just being technically competent. And being technically competent is part of being a cyber leader. But it's more than that. You should strive to be competent in your planning, your interpersonal skills, your briefing skills, and dare I say, your writing. And I know the English department could talk about my writing. You should know your cyber warfare publications and your army regulations. Now this competency is built over time. You will not get it when you first show up to my team. But you will continue learning throughout your time in Bullock and whenever you show up to your next job. Do not pass up on opportunities to learn. You should always be learning. So why should you strive for some technical understanding? You'll be translators between the technical and the less technical. When translating up, you are expected to translate our technical cyber language to language your mission partner understands. Joint terms, operational terms, army terms. When translating down to your analysts, you will need to translate those operational terms in a technical way for your analysts to execute. Now, you will not be perfect, and you are not expected to be. You have your weaknesses, and because my job is to enable your success, I will help you with opportunities to overcome them. As I said before, you need to be willing to be coached to be successful. Learn and continue learning. Read and ask questions. And take what you have learned and ensure those in your sphere of influence know them too. Cyber is a team sport. We need everyone to be doing the mission to be, for us to be successful. And they need their opportunity to learn, to grow for us all to be successful. So that brings me to my last leadership value of team learning. I know it doesn't start with a C, and I've already talked about my English skills, so you, I hope you understand. So team learning is important because we all need to grow and improve together. Everyone should be given an opportunity to learn and grow. Not all will seize the opportunities you provide them, but it's your part to provide each one under your care that opportunity for growth. You should strive for shared understanding with everyone around you. Be comfortable with learning from mistakes, your successes, and mere accidents. None of us, including me, are immune to mistakes, successes, and accidents. You should be deliberate in learning from them and have the humility to ensure everyone else has the opportunity to learn from them as well. Now on my team, we conduct AARs. We capture lessons learned. And these lessons are lost if they're not revisited or incorporated into our daily work. We may find ourselves, as we often do in 91 Cyber Protection Team, doing something new for the first time. Regardless of the outcome, it is an opportunity to learn from it and ensure we do it better the next time. We are doing team learning correctly on 91 CPT. If we execute the routine things routinely, and by making success repeatable. Let me repeat that. For you, as Mission Element leads on 91 CPT, we need to execute the routine things routinely and make success repeatable. One person's success can translate into team success if everyone learns from it and improves too. Cyber is a team sport. Maybe you, by the fourth time I say it, Maybe you'll believe me. We need a, everyone to be part of the solution so we can grow and learn together. So that brings me to the end of our initial counseling before we start our conversation. 
I've given you my definition of leadership that I expect you all to lead with, enable the success of others. I ask you to lean with the four leadership values of your character, you care for the people under you, to strive for competence, and to ensure we have team learning. Doing this well will enable the success of others, and they, not you, they will make you successful. Now, to prepare yourself for the next steps of your career, take every opportunity to learn, be coachable, be humble, and ensure those in your sphere of influence are all learning together. I encourage you, wherever the Army takes you, enable the success of others by demonstrating care, character, competence, and a focus on team learning. Now, for the second half of our initial counseling, I open the floor and I welcome any questions. In the back. Hold on a second. We'll grab a microphone for you. Here you go. Good afternoon, sir. Good My afternoon. My question is how do you best make use of the many backgrounds and educational and cultural and other types that you find from working with both officers, NCOs, and also Department of the Army civilians? How are you best making use of that? Yeah, great question. Um, so whenever we get our orders and go into the operational process, that invitation to develop our plan for the team is, everyone on the team is given an opportunity to give input. And we may find people with expertise on a specific type of terrain. That's an E4. And I sure want them in planning for a mission because our success could be dependent on the input that they provide. So the first step is getting to know your people, right? You need to know what their strengths, what their weaknesses are. And as a mission element lead and on a cyber protection team, you will be that advocate on behalf of all of your soldiers and civilians to the operational process, and then bringing them with you when we do planning. So um, how do you leverage it? When you do a sergeant's time training or hip pocket training, it doesn't matter who's giving it. It doesn't have to be a sergeant. It doesn't have to be a warrant officer. It could be a civilian. It could be, like I said, a PFC. Um, you will be shocked by the expertise within your formation um, and the drive that they have to succeed. And so what I challenge you to do is just to harness it um, and to include them into the, the planning process um, and then ensure you get feedback from them too because their voice matters. Other questions? Sir. It's a great question. Um, and it probably has to do with what I feel is a place that I did not succeed as well. And I was in company command, I wasn't a good coach. And so coming here to teach in the EECS department, um, seeing two of my students in this crowd, hi Sky, hi Brian, um, that I think has changed my leadership philosophy the most in that when we coach each other, when I coach, when you coach down, that everyone grows at the same time and then we can do a whole lot more than what we could have done previously. Um, so these, uh, probably most of these leadership values were kind of part of my uh, personal belief, probably after company command, and a whole lot of reflection and then opportunities for growth. Um, our previous brigade commander uh, from the Cyber Protection Brigade um, and, and our current brigade commander, they focus a lot on care and care for people. 
Uh, General, I think it was General McConville said that the army is in a business of people and that if we're not leading well, people are getting out. If we're leading well and they're brought into the mission, they're going to stay in um, and we need them to do that. It's a good question. Oh. Cool.